Good evening, everyone. Welcome in. Thanks for those of you who waited a little while and came in earlier. Hope you guys have a lovely dinner. <laughs> okay, just wait on for a while. Recording in progress. Evening, everyone. Just about one thing. How many more scallions? Salamat, petang. Okay, thanks for coming in on time. Um, see that there's a lot of maybe your friends and classmates maybe not here yet. Can just send them a text, remind them we are starting soon. Uh, as I'm gonna go through a very quick briefing about AUG uh, about us. Um, can let the friends know you can come in now. Uh, we will start very very soon. Okay, if they are finishing up their dinner, no, no worries, they can join after they're done. Okay, tonight, last week we have all the maths. So this week is all about sciences and today we start off with the chemistry class. Okay, how many of you are feeling the chemistry? No, give me some reaction, okay? Come on, come on. Okay, that's a bad pun, but give me some reaction, man. <laughs> You know, some emojis, say hi to everyone else in the chat. Okay, let's just, you know, get things a little interactive. Hi, 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 Junior. Hi, Rachel. Annyeong, annyeong. Okay, hope you had a dinner, not too sleepy. <laughs> Start this class today. Okay, for those of you who have not joined our Telegram uh, group, um, you, you can still join, not too late, okay? Just in case some of you all have missed it out. Um, because later on, we're gonna do some discussion, um, share the materials that's been shared, uh, that's, that's gonna be shared later on by teacher Jahun. So yeah, if you have not, pretty sure my team has put up a link on the chat, you can click on it. And there's also contacts to offices that's nearest to whichever cities you come from. Okay, now I'll just do a very quick introduction about AUG. Okay, let me just put down the mu music a little lower. 
Right, pretty sure you all can see my screen here behind me. Okay, so um, for the benefit of those to you who first time joining us, um, and for those for you, maybe a little reminder uh, who we are, AVG Student Services, you first time hear it, or you hear it from your friends, or totally new to you. So I'll just do a very quick briefing, uh, just introduction about us, so that you get to know a little bit about us before we start the chemistry class today. Okay, so uh, we are called AUG Student Services. In short, you can call us AUG for our iconic uh, blue color. So we are a one-stop student service placement center. So we offer um, free educational services to students like yourself and sometimes even parents, uh, bridging you to the institutions, um, you know, colleges, universities, so on and so forth, both overseas and locally in Malaysia. So we established since 1995. So we've been 26 years now in um, service in this line of servicing students like yourself. So we have already expanded over the years to 25 offices across um, seven countries. So mainly you can see here in Malaysia, we have the most offices, 12 in total, uh, being um, with Kota Kinabalu in East Malaysia being the latest addition to our uh, branch. So yes, I would like to just mention that if you do plan to further studies late, um, later on after your SPM and I don't know, your pre-U, whether you're doing A-levels, your OSMAT, your um, whatever pre-U program you are planning to do. And if you plan to do further studies into Australia, we do have five offices in the major cities of Australia. You can see here Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney, Perth, and Adelaide. And um, we have onshore support from the offices there. So when you arrive there, especially for those who've never been to Australia um, to leave, be away from family, and we have our staff office there to support you uh, if, let's say, in the future, you do decide to further studies in Australia. And of course, we have offices um, in all the countries that's listed there. So what we do, we basically help students to figure out what are their options of study, further studies, um, whether they meet their entry requirements, uh, whether they, um, what, what kind of um, universities will be well known for, what kind of course that they are interested to study, so on and so forth and then go through the all tedious process of application, uh, applying for the offer letter, getting the full offer letter, accepting the offer, you know, enrolling to the uh, the subjects uh, into the semesters um, of the study. So these are all that we do, the bread and butter of our business, to be honest. And then, of course, if you decided to study overseas, not just in Australia, UK, in some of the countries, which I will show you a quick list later on, we do assist students uh, in student visa application and as well as travel, um, accommodation, arrangement if needed. And very recently, we had our UK pre-departure seminar where we have students that are traveling this month, actually going into their September 2021 um, UK intakes. That's where UK uh, intakes usually at, um, se September. So these are some of the services we do um, to connect you um, and prepare you before you enroll and even fly off your studies. And all of the services that I've just mentioned, they are all absolutely free of charge. We don't charge our students for services that we provide. Okay, so we don't just play students locally in Malaysia, like I mentioned earlier. As you can see here, Australia, um, UK, um, Singapore, US, Ireland are some of the hotspots for students of some of the popular study destinations. And as well as others, just to mention quickly, Canada, Switzerland, and still others that's not in the list list as well. Okay, and we also do other things like today we organize this um, in co collaboration with TTC Tuition Center. Um, we have this session so that we hopefully we can help you out if you do uh, choose to take uh, chemistry as one of your subjects in SPM later on. And I hope that uh, we, we, we have another one more tomorrow and next week. And yeah, hopefully there are more events like this we organize for you. Uh, although right now we can't meet physically, most of the events that you see, uh, services that we do and organize here on the screen, you see uh, most mainly has already moved to virtual. Hopefully when the situation gets better, we can meet you physically in person and do some physical activities in the future. Okay, so this is a very quick snapshot of our uh, contacts for all of our Malaysia offices. So if you need to just take a quick screen grab or you want to uh, just save the number right now, or we also put it in the chat, we can always refer back later on if after I've taken it off of this screen. Please do um, follow up our Instagram and Facebook. We are on social media, of course. You can search us up, AUG Malaysia. Like us, follow us. That will be much, much appreciated. 
from you. And also we have our website for more comprehensive full details of what do we do and uh, all of the events that we have. From time to time, we do update them. You can follow, uh, you can check us out, www.augstudy.com slash Malaysia. Okay, this is a very brief introduction about us. And um, okay, also this month, September, in conjunction with um, Malaysia Day, I just have a special announcement to all of you. Okay, this is the first time I'm announcing in this platform. So how many of you, just, just let me know, uh, how many of you know when is Malaysia Day? Which date? Just let me know in the chat box. 916, 916, 16, 16, 13 September. What? <laughs> okay, most of you are right, it's 16 September, okay. Uh, which year is our first Malaysia Day, anyone? Which year? 1963. Well done, man. You all passed your sejarah for our first session. <laughs> okay, yes, in conjunction with our um, Malaysia Day, we have this um, Tana Ayaku Sport and Win campaign um, where you can participate in just three very simple steps. Okay, first, you see the QR code on the top right corner. You can scan it and uh, you can join now, to be honest. And although the campaign starts on the following Monday, next week, but uh, yes, basically how it works is we, after you fill up all your particulars, which is for um, arrangement of gift um, price to you, if you do win it. So spot all the differences on the second page of the um, form, you will see two images. So it's just a fun uh, activity for you. You can spot all the differences. Don't have to figure out all of them. Just need to know, let us know what are all the differences that you already find and what, are, what is the total. Can be one, two, 10, 50, 99, 100, I don't know. Okay, but uh, since you're here, I'll just let you know. The hint is um, the total differences will just be between one to 50, okay? It won't be more than 50, okay? So for those of you, uh, if you keen to just click on the link, uh, which my team probably already put in the chat box, or you can scan the QR code now, if you want to pull out your phone, you can do that and just check it out. Of course, don't do it when you're done with doing your class, okay? Focus on your class, you can do it after as well. So that's the second step. So you scan a QR code, tell us the differences. Thirdly, you write just a simple statement and phrase um, representing the spirit of Malaysia. I don't know, it can be something related to recently our Olympic or right now the Paralympic is happening or I don't know, our new government, new uh, prime minister, anything, anything that represents the spirit of Malaysia, just a short phrase or statement. Click submit, you're done. Okay, if you got a correct answer, and most likely we will contact you uh, to arrange how we're going to give you the prizes. So as you can see here, we have a total of 640 worth of uh, gifts, vouchers to give out every day in the span of total 10 days from the 6th of September, which is next Monday, right up to 15th of September, the day before our Malaysia Day. Okay, you can feel free to share this. Once you have done it, you can share it to your classmate. To any of your friends really that you know, uh, as long as you are 13 to 18 years old or your friends, they are 13 to 18 years old, they or you, you yourself can participate. And I know all of you guys here are 17 years old. Come on, you can just participate. We can't wait to give this away as a form of celebrating. Um, we know that we cannot come to you or you come to us because of the lockdown. But, you know, this is just a way of us appreciating and uh, encouraging Malaysian in the midst of this pandemic as we are seeing uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. So yes, so share this out um, as we celebrate this year's Malaysian and Independence Day. Okay, that's all. All. Let me stop my sharing. Can I just do a very quick favor uh, as I've done for the previous uh, few weeks? If you can just turn on your video now, we will take a group photo with Teacher Jahan. Okay, before we start our class, that will be much appreciated. Of course, at your convenience, if you are convenient to take Turn on your video. If you're still eating, that's fine. I mean, you can chill while you smile. I don't know. <laughs> we probably can't tell, but yeah, no worries. If you can just turn on your camera now, we just take a quick group photo. Camera crack. Wow. Oh. Man, so many technical problems with you all. Yeah, if you can just turn it on now, uh, we just take a group, quick group photo. I'll just give like a minute or so for everyone to do that. All right, all right. Hello, hello. I see some familiar faces. 
Thanks for joining. Okay, some of you say sorry, cannot. No problem, no problem. Maybe during the one, two, three, you can put some emoji. At least we know you are here for the photo. You try your best. Just that for some reason, for your, your camera doesn't work or whatsoever reason, you can't do it. Okay? And put an emoji when I say three so that you can, in a way, be in the side of the photo more than just your name. Thanks for that, Nabila. It's, yeah, it's Sarah. I saw, I saw that emoji. <laughs> Okay, let's do this very quickly. Okay, we're gonna do a few shots, okay, just to have everyone in. Thanks for the emoji, when you Maybe give a smile. Still like a smile. Yes. I saw a smile. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. On three, yeah. One, two, three. So, okay, relax. I'm gonna take like maybe two, three more. On three, one, two, three. Relax, relax. I saw some with emoji with uh, sunglasses. Thanks. Some with love heart. Okay, on three, one more. One, two, three. Some with a ghost, uh, ghost emoji. Okay, uh, I know what month is this, but for some of your Chinese out there. Okay, one more, one more. Thanks for the emoji. Keep it coming. On three, one, two, and three. Okay, thank you everyone for doing that. Okay. Oh, very fun. Okay, now I'm going to invite our teacher today, Teacher Jahan, which is also our chemistry expert to conduct tonight's class. Uh, teacher Jahan, just very quickly introduce him. He has eight years experience on teaching chemistry. Uh, in SPM and also to IGCSE students, interestingly. And he's been a very a usual chemistry seminar speaker. And he has done a few, uh, this kind of online virtual session with students. And I think, I believe some of Jahan's students is here as well. So yeah, maybe you can say hi to your teacher. So what we're going to cover today is um, a topical analysis and exercise. Of course, I think some of you already realized from our Facebook post, from F5, uh, from 5 Chapter 1, Redox Reaction. Okay, so I'll leave the talking to him uh, as he's going to present. So help me, please welcome Teacher Jahan, give your support, um, your emoji. All over to you, Jahan. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of random names <laughs> because I don't know you all. Okay, uh, I'm seeing some of my students too. Okay, ah, so I'm seeing like some of you, I just, I just see you this afternoon. <laughs> You guys are here again. Mm, hi, hi, good evening, guys and girls. Oh, I see Catholic students. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, because I have a lot of Catholic students too. I have Chonghua students. Yes. Oh, there's a lot of real people here. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, uh, for those who are wondering what's behind my background, <laughs> just a random 10 years old, yeah. <laughs> 20 years. Okay. Uh, for those who are wondering what's on, on my background, it's actually uh, a code that is made for my student. Okay, this this actually this background made for my student. <laughs> uh, it's actually here to actually wish all of you, whatever you actually exam you go through, you're gonna actually go through it. Okay, you're gonna score it, you're gonna pass it. Okay, you're gonna do it in the, you're gonna do do well in the next exam. Huh? Okay, so I believe some most of the school having exams recently, right? I think because I am. Having USJ students having exam recently, I'm having different schools having exams. So guys, all the best in your exam, or probably if you're done with your exam, <laughs> hopefully you get a good marks for that. Okay, so can you guys see my screen? Just to double confirm. You guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can, Teacher Jahan. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. So our, as you all know, okay, AUG and TTC, okay, for those who are from Catholic, okay, from USJ, I believe most of you guys know us, okay, we are actually outside Catholic, okay. Chemistry kind of hard, especially redox. Yes, that's the point of me actually is focusing on this topic today. So if you actually know that uh, this chapter, uh, I don't know whether how your school teacher teach you, but in tuition, okay, because we go by weeks and we go by months. So we actually started this chapter for those who are in Form 5 since last year with my tuition with me, we started this chapter since last year. And then we actually ended this chapter around like around March. So probably if you actually go along with our notes, you see like the big part of notes. 
we take around four months to cover up this whole chapter, which is a crazy big chapter. Yeah, for the redox, yes, yes. Salt is a lot harder. Mm, I would say salt, yes, is definitely quite hard too, okay? But if you compare the syllabus, I would say mm, salt is slightly shorter than redox reaction. Ah, so redox reaction is actually a lot of information, a lot of syllabus and stuff. But I would say salt is definitely harder because uh, the understanding part, you actually, students actually struggle in salt. But for redox, uh, once you understand it, I would say it's all good. But it's just long, uh. basically it's just long. Okay, every chapter is hard. Mm, I agree with this. <laughs> okay, thermochemistry though, mm, I, thermochemistry was okay. Consumer chemistry is too much to memorize. Uh, if you ask me, actually whole chemistry is about memorizing. Uh. <laughs> okay, so it's basically how you actually face it. Okay, uh, you change your attitude, you change your mind, your mindset about it. Like, uh, we can understand it this way. Form 4 can join. What do you mean Form 4 can join? You want to join this seminar from four? Uh, for now, uh, because I'm doing from five topic, because if you're in form four and you join this seminar, uh, you might struggle a little bit. <laughs> okay, you might struggle a little bit. Okay, uh, since you are from four, like uh, Rishini, uh, since you say from four can join, if you want to, why not? But I will say it will be a very suffering <laughs> uh, two hours. <laughs> I'm from four, but I just want to learn a bit. Sure, sure. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Ah, it's better that you learn earlier than uh, you have some mental preparation, right? Ah, so uh, better than um next year, then you see your oh, GG man. <laughs> retaking SPM but not KSSM. Oh, I'm so sorry for those who retake SPM. This is the, the transition period where those retaking SPMs uh candidates are, this is where they suffer. KBS, KBSM and KSSM. Uh, the difference is there. Okay, there's quite some difference there, especially in redox reaction. Air, I would say it's quite hard. Yeah, the, the difference is there. Yes, yes. For chemistry, like, but other subjects, I'm not sure. But definitely for chemistry, the difference is quite, it's quite big, especially for this chapter, redox reaction. Uh, and also, uh, for too long, mm, if you say it's too long, uh, it's actually last time redox reaction. Uh, but like this chapter right now, it was actually... Uh, in KBSM, it was three chapters combined into one chapter. Ah, some KBSM don't have, yes, 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 but just a little bit. Uh, I will say the, the majority is actually we have more for, K, for KSSM. Is there any good reference book that is easy to understand? Mm, okay, guys, for, for those who are taking KSSM, uh, I will actually still suggest textbook is the best choice. Because right now, you all know KSSM is like just brand new, right? And you guys are the first batch. You guys are like the white mice of the first batch of KSSM. So I would say textbook is the best reference book for now because if you actually buy those reference books at, 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 uh, like you, you see like those Palangi and stuff, it's not to say it's bad, just that they will put a lot of extra information, but we never know whether this extra information, is it coming out next in the exam or not? Okay, not. so sometimes textbook, okay, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. But well, of course, when you do exercise, uh, you realize textbook, it's like a lot of information. So definitely, if you really want reference book, uh, I would say uh, any reference book for now, everyone is almost the same. Like every brand are doing the same right now. Okay, so we try our best to actually uh, compile every reference book on the market. And then we try to put into our notes, which is guys, this is actually a short notes, guys. Ah, these short notes uh, will be emailed to you guys after the class. Okay, so this short notes is about the whole Form 5 Chapter 1 Redox Reaction. And it takes around 18 pages. So it's just, huh? 18 only. Ah, uh. uh, guys, this is short notes. Uh. You don't expect to be too very, to be very detailed inside here. So, okay, so you still need your reference book. You still need your textbook. Okay, this is just a mind map, a brief picture about what is this whole chapter about. Okay, now. so definitely if you ask me reference book, uh, if you ask me any suggestion, I will say, uh, because we actually bought all the reference book on the market, and then we try to compare to each other I will say almost the same. Uh. Almost the same. Okay. So in this case here, uh, I will say textbook, still your basic reference. Then for even more, then you can go for reference book on the market. Okay. So Oxford Faja not out yet. Mm, yeah. Quite, quite slow because like there's no past year, guys. There's no reference for us to actually go on with it. So Okay, so Q&A session brought forward. 
I know, right? Okay, guys. Uh, let me just go along with this. Uh, it's okay, guys. I'm here to actually answer your question now. Okay. So uh, anyhow, the notes is provided to you. I'm just gonna go along with uh, important parts. Okay, so guys, before we actually go into our syllabus, the, the major changes in our chemistry is basically the format. So I believe you all know uh all the actually all the format at this case here, your uh bio, your physics, your chemistry. Okay, so they are around the same. Okay, so for here you can see there's three papers. So paper one, paper two, paper three. I believe you all know that. So paper one, it was actually 50 questions. They actually changed it to 40. So it's actually for around 40 marks. Paper two is 100 marks. Okay, you question A, B, C. Section A is basically your subjective question. You know the short answers. Okay, compulsory answer, must answer all. Section B is your essay question, which is one question is 20 marks. Okay, now. So in that one question, 20 marks, uh, you have to choose one. You have two questions inside here. Okay, choose one. Then for section C is where you guys normally actually suffer because in KBSM, okay, KBSM, SPM, section C used to have two questions, choose one. Okay, but in KSSM, they actually modify it, become one question compulsory. So you have no choice. Last time in KBSM, uh, they used to have a two question here, choose one, two question here, choose one. So you guys are gonna be like very happy because you can choose the one that you are more familiar with, right? But section C is now actually where you guys don't have to, you don't have a choice. You must, you must answer this, okay? So this is where you all suffer, I see, okay? And then lastly, practical test, guys, this one, uh, do you see I actually label down here, updated to 17th July, okay? Why, leh? because uh, since last year they announced this, paper three become practical tests, they have been changing so many times. So it, probably in the, near, in the near future, they will change the paper three back to written tests, no one knows. <laughs> Okay, so but then so for, for this case right now, okay, if you all know last time, uh, paper three, uh, they used to ask you all to do like multiple experiments in one subject. Okay, multiple experiments in one subject. So right now they modify, they simplify because you guys haven't been doing any experiment for, for the past whole, whole year or past two years, right? So they try to simplify, simplify, simplify. Now you guys just have to carry out one experiment with procedure provided. And then, of course, you have to answer those observation, variables, uh, inference, and hypothesis. Only went to lab for once. You went, you went for once, and that's lucky enough. <laughs> okay. How does the essay question look like? The probably they give you like uh, one question, like uh, uh, a major question first. Then in that one question, they will have label like uh, question 3A, question 3B, question 3C. But it's not going to be like three marks. It's not going to be like two marks. It's going to be like five marks. Five, five, ten. Five, 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 also possible. So these are all the marks allocation. How to even memorize all the experiment procedure? Oh, guys, the good thing is in KSSM, you don't really have to memorize procedure because procedure is provided. You just go in, follow the step. Ah, but you don't go and go in and shake your hand. Ah, and you do experiment, you, you pour out your acid like that. Ah, then GG. Okay. So how to even count the final mark? Very good question. I have no idea. Because I, I, I actually see the the, the format of they actually posted out in the official website. In one class, maximum 10 students. And imagine your school got like 100 students taking chemistry. Yeah. You're gonna need 10, 10 science lab. How is that even possible to actually carry out at the same time? So uh, I will say, let's, let's just wait and what, let, let's see what they actually announced. Ah, okay. So the experiments are hard. None of the experiments has done in the whole form, but yeah, that's very true. MCO, I think, will cancel practical part. Let's predict the future. <laughs> in paper two, is it possible for them to ask us to represent? Yes, definitely, because in your essay, they may ask you to describe an experiment. Describe a detailed experiment that we actually have to uh, try to uh, write out some uh, procedure in fact. So I would say it is possible. I would say it's possible. So you guys don't have to actually, don't, don't think that, oh, procedure confirmed not coming up. Definitely for paper three is a good news, but paper two still carry, still gonna go on with procedure writing. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are like of, we are like to do a practical tests, yeah. yeah. So JPS Sarawak has held the state level practical test for chemistry, by the way. Uh, is it? So means you guys actually did practical tests. I actually have some, some schools actually did some practical tests, but uh, it's not to the full format. Okay, means like they never go through the full format because they did it at the, at, at the beginning of the year, but now the, the, the format changed already. So no one actually, I would say like, if you get a chance to do paper three, you're very lucky. 
<laughs> what is chemistry? <laughs> okay, guys, so these are some basic information about your format. So you can go through with it if you want to. When describing experiment, how can us know the volume of the material used? Oh, uh, for the volume of actually, it depends. Okay, let's say for acid, uh, it depends on experiment. Normally in acid, your maximum volume, I would say is around like 100 cm3. Okay, below than that is best. Okay, it depends on what you actually want to produce. Or uh, are you doing any just analysis or are you trying to produce a salt? Because we actually learned that in form four, right? When you want to produce a salt, you're gonna need a lot of chemicals. But if you're just doing some tests, probably you just need around like five cm cube, 10 cm cube, just a test tube. Okay, so only chem will provide procedure. Oh no, all three science subjects means in the paper three, they will all give you procedure. Two guided experiment and one unguided experiment. Uh, yeah, that was the old format. Now they changed to one guided experiment. Ah, no, no more unguided experiment anymore. <laughs> you see, because students are actually confused about this. Yes, last time it was actually two guided experiment, one unguided experiment. But now they cut, 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 become only one guided experiment. Okay, then becomes observation and stuff. Okay, so uh, all still carrying at the same time. No one knows. <laughs> it all depends on. Like the, the, the near future, okay? You, you, all, you all know when comes when the time comes, okay? Probably I will say high chances we are going back to written tests, uh, okay? Like legit, legit, okay? My, my, my expectation is we are actually going back to written tests, okay? But no one knows, okay? Let's just wait for the government, okay? We are the mice, <laughs> a little bit, yes. Okay, so guys, this is the short notes, okay? So of course, these short notes, are, I'll, I'll, I actually included some exercise. So if you actually got these notes in the in, in after the class, you actually see my questions at the back. I actually label them according to topics. So I think every topic I give you like one or two questions. So you can just practice with it with answers provided. Okay. Now. So guys, don't be don't be very worried about that. Uh definitely in this one and a half hour, I cannot finish the whole chapter. I took three, I took four months to finish this whole thing. You imagine I take one hour, I finish this, you guys are gonna be like. The, all the knowledge left side in, go, left right side go up, kind of. So I'll try to go as detailed as possible. And those who are important, I'll just go through it, okay, with a, with a star. So uh, for the first thing we know, redox reaction stands for what? So we know that redox reaction represent reduction and oxidation, kind of. So it's basically two reaction occurring at the same time. So it's a chemical reaction where oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously. So I'm, I actually saw the marking scheme that they actually want this word uh, very strictly. So it's best to write simultaneously. But I actually see some school teacher actually accept the word occur at the same time. Because you know simultaneously and at the same time, they are same meaning, right? So we can use simultaneously. We can use at the same time. But I would say prefer, uh, I would prefer simultaneously. Then in this redox reaction, right, we always actually have to analyze like, is this oxidation? Is it reduction? Is it this? Is it that? Is it this? Is it that? So it all depends on the four information here. Oxygen, hydrogen, electrons, and your oxidation number. Sorry, guys. Too full for my dinner. Yeah. Okay. So for reduction at this case here, you also have to deal with oxygen, hydrogen, electrons, and oxidation, right? But they are always opposite. Okay. So you see oxidation is where you actually see a chemical reaction that gains oxygen. Okay. When you see some, someone who lose oxygen, it will be reduction, right? So that's how you see I leave an empty space here. This is the normal way I, was, I used to teach my, my own students, okay? So for oxidation, okay, for reduction, what are the shortcut, okay? What is the shortcut to actually memorize the redox reaction? How am I supposed to know is this oxidation? Is this reduction? So guys, for those who actually know, for those who actually attended my class, it's actually plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, write this down, plus, minus, plus, minus. And then OH, and then O and E1, okay now, just OH, O and E1. Okay, what does this mean that if you see a chemical reaction that gains oxygen, oxidation. If you see a chemical reaction that lose hydrogen, also consider oxidation. If you see someone who gain oxidation number, by the way guys, what is oxidation number? It's basically the charge, right? You see Fe2 plus, become Fe3 plus, oxidation, okay? And then whenever you see lose electron, also oxidation. Okay now, so once you can memorize this side, uh, I will say the other side, basically, you know it already. Why? Because reduction and oxidation, they are always opposite, right? So you can see that at this side, I'll remain the O, H, O, and E. Just I change the symbol, become negative, positive, negative, positive. So minus, plus, minus, plus. 
O H O N E one. Okay, now. So you have this in your mind. You basically can analyze all type of equations or reactions. Then you can actually see is it a redox reaction or not. Okay, now. So of course, not all the way can be used in all chemical reactions. Sometimes you only can see electron changes. Sometimes you can see oxygen changes. Sometimes you can see hydrogen changes. So let's say if we go for the first one. Okay, from here, yeah. CuO becomes Cu. So always you compare like before, after, before, after. That's how you actually see is it a redox reaction. So from CuO becomes Cu, do you see he loses the oxygen? So loses oxygen, reduction. Okay, now. so at the same time, carbon go actually gains the oxygen become carbon dioxide. So when you gain oxygen, oxidation. So you see here, you see this reduction, you see oxidation. Therefore, I can conclude that this is an, uh, this is a redox reaction. Okay, now. so of course, this is uh, just like simple uh, practice, simple understanding. You can just look through it. Sometimes some equations don't have oxygen. You see this? You cannot look at oxygen, right? But you can look at hydrogen. Ah, so you see, H2S become S. You lose the H. So when you lose the H, oxy oxidation. Then for Cl2, it gains the H reduction. Okay, now. So these are all the ways you can actually analyze whether this is a redox reaction or not. But sometimes if you like look at half equation, half equation got no oxygen, got no uh, hydrogen, but you see electrons. If you see electrons on the right-hand side, means that it loses electron because you know that everything after the chemical equation, the arrow, means that you donate electrons. If you see electron before the arrow, means it receives electron, right? So if you see the electron at the right-hand side of the equation, oxidation, because you lose electrons. If you see electron on the left-hand side of the arrow, it gains electron, we call it reduction. So of course, you can see like the charges, again, okay, from no charge become Fe3+, plus. the charge increase, increase in oxidation number, oxidation. From zero to negative one, decrease in oxidation number, is your reduction. So I believe all these are, are the basic information for a redox reaction, right? So I believe you all, Remember it, hopefully. <laughs> because right now it's like around the September stuff, right? Uh, probably you guys forgot what you learned in January and February. Okay, so hopefully all these bring back your memory a little bit. Okay, okay. But of course, not all chemical reactions are redox reactions. You see, examples of non-redox reaction. You can see. So yeah, let's say when I do neutralization, HCl plus NaOH become NaCl plus H2O. Guys, when you see this case, uh, you all know how to form equations, right? you exchange uh, the ions. So the H is going to combine with the OH to form H2O, the Na and the Cl combines to form NaCl, and then you go, you form all this. You see that before reaction and after reaction, you realize that there is no changes in your oxidation number. You see H, it was plus one. It is still plus one at the back. Ah, then you see your Cl is neg negative one. At the back, it's still negative one. So in this case here, we know that there is no changes in oxidation number. This is a this is a non-redox reaction. Okay, same case whenever you just analyze and see when the charge never changed before and after reaction, they are non-redox reaction. Is it okay? Guys, just a briefly go through about who is redox, who is non-redox. Huh? So I would say it's quite simple to understand. Okay, so go along with it. This is where the the hard part comes. Okay, so when we talk about oxidation and reduction, they are always uh, helping on each other. Because why? Because oxidation, you release electrons, right? You donate electrons. Then reduction is going to receive the electron that you release from just now. Kind of. So they are actually helping on each other. Okay, They occur at the same time and they help on each other. So in this case, you see, Mg becomes Mg2+, plus, it donates electron, becomes uh, Mg2+. Plus. But who is going to receive the electron? The oxygen is going to receive electrons, become the oxide ions. So you see that oxidation, they actually and reduction, they all, they, all, they all work at the same time. They actually help on each other. But this is not the harder part. Okay, The hard part is actually where you see this thing here. Guys, what do you call this? Anyone know what is this called? <laughs> Anyone know? This is the one that you actually watch every day. Ah, the YouTube. Ah, but no, not the YouTube you watch. Huh? Basically, a U-shaped tip. Huh? Voltaic cell. Very good. That's a very detailed answer. Okay, A YouTube is basically a voltaic cell. Why say so? If you guys remember what's voltaic cell, voltaic cell means that a chemical cell that do not have any electrical energy, but then you started off with chemical energy, later on you generate electricity. So you see at here, do you see any battery? No, right? So in this case, this no battery is actually a voltaic cell because 
you're having chemical reaction at both sides. One side donate electron, one side receive electrons. You have your electron flow, you have your uh, electricity flowing, and you generate electricity. Ah, okay, now, very good. Voltaic cell, it's also a very good answer. Basically, this is a um, YouTube. Lah. Okay, so if you can look at this, this YouTube here, I believe you guys struggle always uh, in finding out which side is oxidation, which side is reduction, right? Like if I give you this chemical here, I give you here is SCD5 potassium manganese 7, I give you here is iron 2 sulfate. You guys gonna always start at the first question, like where is oxidation, where is reduction, right? So I list down all the possible agent at here. You see, uh, guys, do you, do you remember what's agent? Ah, see, uh, what is the meaning of agent? Agent, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Uh, they are always actually, uh, the name of the agent is always opposite of the reaction. Means if a chemical undergoes oxidation, we call the chemical reducing agent. So means if I go back to here, yeah, Mg becomes Mg2 plus. Okay, oxidizing agent cause oxidation, correct? But to be exact, it causes the chemical beside him to undergo oxidation. Ah, so that's why you call it oxidizing agent. Now. So you see, yeah, Mg becomes Mg2 plus. This is oxidation, right? But who is the one that makes him undergo oxidation? Is the chemical at the at the other side? You get a point. So at the same time, we know that O2 undergoes reduction. Okay, we know O2 undergoes reduction. But who makes him undergo reduction? Which is the Mg. Ah, so I undergo oxidation, but I make you under, uh, undergo reduction. It's always helping on each other. So in this case here, you see, Mg is oxidation, but I will call Mg also at the same time, I'm calling him the reducing agent. Okay, for O2, he undergo reduction. At the same time, I will call him the oxidizing. Agent, because he oxidized Mg. Ma. Ah, that Mg reduced O2. You get a point? So the agent name and the reaction name is always opposite. Okay? So it works vice versa. Ah, correct, correct. Okay? So of course, if you look at the agent here, it means that every chemical here, they are possible to actually oxidize the chemical beside them. Means all these chemicals, they will actually undergo reduction. Okay? And all this chemical, which is a reducing agent, they will undergo oxidation. You all get a point? Can I? Ah, so if you actually struggle in, in the exam, like teacher, how do I know who undergo oxidation, who undergo reduction? Ah? First, analyze who is your agent. Okay, you memorize agent as your kickstart of your, of your question. Okay, especially those who are actually very complicated. So if you see this name, this here, acid 5 potassium manganate 7 and acid 5 potassium dichromate 6. Ah, you guys always see this name, right? And whenever you see this name, you guys are just going to give up on the question. Try not. <laughs> okay? But I will say, why not we just try to remember this very complicated name and you just remember it as this oxidizing agent. Whenever you see this guy, he's your oxidizing agent. Okay, now, so the acidified, very long name, just memorize it as the oxidizing agent. Means that this chemical here undergo reduction. It actually make the chemical at the other side undergoes oxidation. Potassium chromate also oxidizing agent. Yes, yes. Ah, which is these two. They are both oxidizing agent. Okay, which is the least at here. All the chemicals here. These are all your possible oxidizing agent. Okay, at the other side, these are all your possible reducing agent. Okay, so use this table as a guideline. Ah, so whenever you see YouTube, ah, you do not know how to start. Then you remember my notes. Okay, you try to fill this page and see who is reducing agent who is oxidizing agent, then you try to undergo, uh, see, check who undergo reduction, who undergo oxidation, and there you go, you have your donate of electrons, you have your receive of electrons and stuff. Then you try to play, or play, play along with the, with, the, with the redox reaction. But if you really ask me, uh, in a YouTube that is a very common question like them, they like to ask you something about Fe, okay? They always ask these two questions. Either they, are, they want you to actually make Fe2+, plus become Fe3+, plus, Okay, Fe2 plus, they come Fe3 plus, or vice versa, they ask you, they actually give you Fe3 plus, ah. they want you to turn it back to Fe2 plus. You get the point? So let's say for, for now, in this case right here, I take away this chemical. I want you to actually make Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. So first of all, let's analyze what process is this. So Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus is oxidation. So to make him undergo oxidation, I need to add oxidizing agent. You get the point? Uh, yeah, to make him undergo oxidation, I need to add oxidizing agent, which is the chemical on the right-hand side. I'm going to put 
either one of these. You get on? You know? But if I turn it, I want it. This chemical here is Fe3 plus. I want you to turn it into Fe2 plus. What are you gonna do? Analyze first. This is actually a reduction process to make him undergo reduction. This side here, I want to add a reducing agent. So what reducing agent I can do? I can add all these possible answers. Okay. So these are all the vice versa. Okay, the vice versa uh, understanding. What is the uses of acidic condition of the acidified potassium manganese? Oh, basically, it's basically on the H plus. We want the H plus. So when you have this H plus, uh, at the end of the reaction, you're going to get H2O. Okay, when you form H2O, uh, all these chemicals that you can see, all these ions, uh, it's much more obvious. Okay, you can actually test all these ions and you can see the color. Okay, the color is much more obvious in this case. Is it have fixed answer for oxidizing agent and reducing agent? I will say fixed answer not necessary, but if you can know all everything here, definitely is is uh, is around here. Okay, oxidizing agent they are fixed in this list here. Reducing agent are fixed in this list here. So basically, these are all the possible oxidizing agent and reducing agent. That's your possible agents that you can see from here. You're not gonna get something other from other than this, right? Any of here also can. Yes, if the question never specified. Uh, what agent to use, feel free to use anyone. But if you ask me, according to experience, I will say uh, normally they will guide you along. They will give you the, the, the agent to use. Okay, You just have to analyze who is, the, who is what agent, who is what agent. Okay, The hydrogen ion is H plus, right? I think there's a mistake in the potassium dichromate. Eh? Is it? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, ah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for realizing this. Oh, no, I didn't realize this because it was so small. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. Okay, yes, yes, it is. Okay, hey, this H plus here. Thanks, thanks. Oh, I didn't realize this. This is having my notes for, for years, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey. Thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Probably students just know that uh, a very simple typo. <laughs> okay, so guys, for for your YouTube, beside asking you who is the agent, who is your uh, reduction and oxidation. And of course, your half equations. So you have to spend some time on doing this because our time is very limited here. I'm not going to go too in too details in this inside here. So uh, besides having your agents and your reduction and oxidation, uh, the next thing to do they will ask you is about the terminals. Do you see I label down your negative terminal and positive terminal? Do you all know, let's say, if I don't ask you, I never give you. They ask you to label down who is positive terminal, who is negative terminal. Do you know who is positive, who is negative terminal? Any way to memorize? Ah, who those who actually stay in my class, ah, you're gonna see this coming. <laughs> okay, so uh, orange. Oh, you use the orange ring? Okay, I actually know the orange ring. So the Mg2 plus need two electrons in the table, right? Uh, Mg2, oh, oh, there's another mistake here. <laughs> wow, you guys are very good in spotting my mistake. Ah. Thanks guys. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of typo here. Let me check. No more typo idea. <laughs> okay, lah, can I, can I. okay, guys, coming back to here. Okay, how do I know who donates electron is a negative terminal? Uh, the one who donates electron is negative terminal? Mm, I will say yes for YouTube. Uh, yes for YouTube. Okay, but for electrolytic cell, which is the other cell that contains battery, uh, then it's something else. Ah, okay, lah. So yes, this is a chemical cell. Yes, yes, chemical cell equals to voltaic cell. They are the same meaning. What are the colors of iodine in different states? Very good question. Later on, I will show you in the notes later on. Okay, I included it in the notes. Okay, ah, for the terminal, eh? ah, because YouTube, ah, for those who actually went memorize like, who donate electron is negative terminal, sure, can. But since we actually memorize who is the agent, right? Let's just go on with the agent. Ah, so I have oxidizing agent, I have reducing agent, right? Okay, so guys, I'm so sorry that this is the first time you guys see me. I'm giving you all this, all this stuff here. <laughs> the way to memorize YouTube terminals is actually this way. Okay, guys, what do you watch when you go to YouTube? <laughs> uh, you watch uh, animes, okay, you watch some uh, channels, okay, videos, okay. I don't know about you guys, but I go YouTube to watch porn. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, take it, take it. Hey, just kidding. Ah, just kidding. Okay. 
<laughs> no lah, guys, YouTube no point one again. I'm just trying to use the YouTube word to show you about this thing here. Okay, okay. Okay, guys, just have fun, have fun. Okay, just have fun. <laughs> okay, for those of my old students, they're going to be like, teacher, this is the first seminar you're having to 300 students. You're going to give them this. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, guys. Okay. So I see you're the man of culture too. <laughs> Okay, no lah, guys. You know why do I say this? Because when I put this out, you guys speak up. Okay, at the same time, it helps you to memorize because if you speak this into half, hey, police. <laughs> hey, guys, shh, shh, shh. don't call police yet. Okay, later, later, later. Okay, why? Because, guys, if you look at this P O and R N, what does it stand for? Positive terminal is your oxidizing agent. Okay, your reducing agent is your negative terminal. Okay, positive oxidizing, reducing negative. Yes, you see, you use your agent to actually memorize uh, who is your terminal. Uh, instead, you find who is who donate electron, who receives electron, right? Since you memorize the agent, why not just use the agent? Go along with it. Ah, okay, this is going to stay in my mind until the exam. <laughs> hey, but don't go and go into exam. Uh, you see, YouTube, uh, you go and write porn in exam. The four alphabet on, on the exam paper, uh, guys, don't do that. Okay? okay, just keep it in your mind. Okay. Whatever happens here, stays here. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so I probably love all, love all the way. <laughs> Don't say, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I realized my mistake. Okay, we have three other students here. I'm so sorry about it. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, okay. So, guys, let's okay with this. Huh? Yeah, huh? So, basically, uh, a simple shortcut for you guys to memorize your positive terminal and negative terminal. Okay, so moving along, okay, do you see I put a star here, which is this is the uh, exam famous question. They like to ask you whether to turn it to Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus or Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. Ah, okay, now. Okay, okay, now. okay. so of course, uh, just now someone actually asked uh, what are the colors in for your halogens and stuff, right? I believe uh, through my experience, every year student is going to ask the same question. I thought like chlorine is yellow, greenish yellow, and then I thought like, uh, then it's always suddenly become colorless. Guys, the color is here. Okay, you see, I put it specifically at here. To let you all know, when your halogens, they are in molecule form, they are having color. So chlorine molecule, it's a greenish yellow gas. Bromine molecule, it's a brown liquid. Okay, iodine solid is a purplish solid. Okay, now. So, but sometimes you see that, I thought, why well, sometimes I see it's colorless, guys? You see chlorine colorless, you see bromine colorless. Those are not chlorine, those are not bromine. Those are halides, which is, they are already in ion form, which is normally, if it's uh, KCl, normally we call the Cl inside, we call it the chloride thing. Chloride. Chloride is colorless. Bromide also colorless. Iodide also colorless. Uh, iodine not brown color, right? Iodine, uh, uh, if you are put it in room temperature, normally it's, uh, it's dark colors. They are dark colors in solid form. But of course, if you have iodine water, it's around like dark brown color. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's how you see. Uh, some students say, teacher, I thought iodine is brown and stuff, right? Yes, definitely. I, sometimes iodine is brown because the color might change according to concentration. If it's very concentrated like solid, uh, it'll become like purplish black. Okay, but if it's like less concentrated, it become like dark brown color. Okay, now. So this is the reason why we need a special test. Well, sometimes you cannot differentiate bromine and iodine, right? They look almost the same. The color make me confused easily. Yes, yes, guys, I know, I know that. So in this table here, you have to make sure that all these colors, they are having color when they are in molecule form. Okay, when they're in molecule form. But when they turn into ion form, they don't have color, colorless. And then some students will say, teacher, I thought, my teacher taught me iodine is brown. Yes, guys, iodine sometimes is brown, but it, it will be very mix, uh, easily to mix up with your bromine water, right? Okay, now. so in this case, uh, that's why we have a special test called the, uh, does bromine, wa bromine water is bromine solid added with water? Uh, no, bromine water, uh, yes, it does contain a little bit of water. If you talk about bromine water, yes, it contains water. Okay, how we know when iodine is purplish or when it's, it's, it's in solid, then it's, it's, it's a purple solid. But if it's like in liquid form, uh, Normally it's dark brown. Okay, normally it's dark brown. Okay, so for this case here, I give you solid ma. So that's why it's dark brown. Uh, sorry, it's purple. I'm so sorry. Okay, so uh in this case here, uh color brown already. Hey. 
<laughs> so fast colorblind man. Wait, colorblind cannot get driving license one. Eh? Ah, don't say that. Ah. Ah, later you 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 fail your driving license, don't come to me. Ah. <laughs> then you blame chemistry. Chemistry made me colorblind. I'm gonna find my chemistry teacher. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh that's why I say I understand that the color of the chlorine and bromine, and even sometimes the iodine, like they always have confusing colors, right? So to actually differentiate them in a very uh, easier, easier way to differentiate them, we actually add this thing called the 111 trichloroethane. And whenever you see here, yeah, uh, for, for you, after adding your 11 trichloroethane, they will actually have a very distinguished color. Uh, you can easily know this color after adding this 111 trichloroethane. We confirm know who is it. So you see from here, uh, at the same time, we learn, we learn this thing called displacement, like guys. Do you know what is the meaning of displacement? It means like you add someone who is actually more reactive, then you can actually displace out, okay, like you kick off someone that is less reactive from the chemical equation thing. So let's say for here, yeah, chlorine, I add into KBr. So how do I normally understand in this case here is, chlorine is like, actually like a, uh, like a girl here. Ah, then we have the KBr here. So the 111 function is to let us more clear about the color. Yes, yes. This thing here, this chemical here, is, that, is to let you uh, distinguish the color in an easier way, okay? To, to make it more clear about the color. Okay, so from here, chlorine added into KBr. As you all know that KBr, it's a positive, a positive and a negative ion, right? So the, can the chlorine goes in and kick off the Br and replace off the Br? So you see, after the reaction, it turns into KCl and Br2, which is this reaction actually occur. Means what? What do you understand from here? You understand that chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Okay, now, so chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Then what color do you see? Because you see, uh, uh, normally when you see this KCl and the Br2, uh, you see normally you see like you have two layers. So whenever we, we add this 111 layer, we're going to look at this molecule. Because this one basically no color. Ma. Because I mentioned to you, KCl, KBr, KI, no color. Whatever you see at the back is basically the molecule that you form. Okay, so if you see brown color, yes, okay. Uh, if you see like a bromine is actually brown, definitely yes, it's correct. Okay, so, uh, but what happened if you after added this 111 trichloroethane, you see from here, it's still brown. Uh, means if you see brown color in, in bromine or iodine, you're not sure. Ma. But whenever you, after you added this 111 trichloroethane, you see brown, uh, definitely is bromine. More obvious, yes. Ah, okay now. But what happened to other things else? Let's say for here, you see uh, my bromine goes in and displaces off the iodine, right? Do you see iodine is formed? Do you see iodine is formed? No, normally iodine, I told you like it's brown or sometimes it's, it's purple, right? But after adding the 111 trichloroethane, you see purple color, definitely confirm. Is I2. Okay, now. So the purpose of adding this, this indicator here is to double confirm who is it. Because you all also know that, oh, very confusing, like sometimes what color, sometimes what color. Is to make the color more obvious, is to double confirm who is it. You see brown after adding this, confirm bromine. You see purple after adding this, you confirm iodine. You see pale yellow after adding this, confirm chlorine. Okay, now. Uh, previously, you see all this, uh, I'm not sure like who is this. What color is this? What color is that? I'm not sure. This is a confirmation indicator. Okay, you add this to double confirm who are they. Okay, so you're testing all this. Okay, so in this case here, Br2, I2, and Cl2. Okay, now? so this is actually also a redox reaction. It is under this chapter because it's a redox reaction because you can see Cl2 becomes Cl minus, right? The charge, the charge change. Ah, Br minus become Br2, the oxidation number also change. So basically, this is a redox reaction. How do we guess the equation from just the result color or we need to memorize? What do you mean, how do we guess the equation from just the result color? Uh, you mean, if I give you a color, uh, you, want, you want to try to know who is it? Uh, or they want to have to memorize? Uh, you have to memorize like, who is, what color is what? What color is what chemical? They want, there's no shortcut for that. Uh, you don't expect me to give you another, go YouTube to watch. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay. There are some something that in, in this in this part that you really have to put some effort on memorizing. Okay, Anna? So 
Uh, after your halogens, we actually have uh, <laughs> no, sorry, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, also for metal, we have displacement. Ah, uh, so a displacement metal here, it depends on the more reactive metal also displaces the less reactive metal. You see it here. Zinc added into copper two sulfate solution because zinc is more reactive. It's gonna go in and replace off the copper. Okay, become zinc sulfate, which is the N two plus. While copper from Cu two plus, uh, he being kicked off become to form copper metal, copper ion, right? Uh, copper, uh, uh, copper atom. So, uh, this is basically depending on the reactivity series. I almost forgot the reactivity series. Almost uh, means not yet uh. <laughs> Okay uh, So. For the reactivity series, uh, and we have another one called the, the electrochemical series. And then we have a new one called the standard electro potential series. Guys, I know by learning the series, uh, definitely you guys, your, your, your brain is going to explode already. Okay? So there are a few series here. We have reactivity series. We have electrochemical series. We have uh, standard electro potential series. So many series, right? So later I'm going to go through uh, a little bit on every series that we mentioned that is not. So, so guys, for Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus, besides doing uh, YouTube, you can also do this simple displacement process. Okay, uh, iron 2, I add Br2, you're going to turn it into Fe3. Uh, Fe2 plus become Fe3. But if you want to co convert it from Fe3 back to Fe2, you add your zinc powder, which is these two guys. This is bromine water is your oxidizing agent. Zinc powder is your reducing agent. You can go back, you see. Ah, so metal powder, reducing agent. You see, bromine water, oxidizing agent. Ah, okay now. So of course, all the agent I, I actually gave you that uh, in the previous page. So just go along with it. As I say, guys, this is just a short notes. You don't expect too many details inside here, Okay. So you still need a textbook and your reference book. Okay. So along with it, you see from here. Ah, guys, this is a brand new syllabus for just now the student who actually trying to retake SPM from KVSM to KSSM. Uh, this is something that you never learned before. This is where you die. Ah, okay, this is this new thing here. <laughs> the, the speechless dot, dot, dot thing. Not like that. Is this the one that will provide in SPM? Okay, guys, this SP, S -E -P -S, okay, I call it the SEPs, uh, okay, in short form. Uh, this series here, uh, normally, okay, uh, according to my prediction, uh, because teacher also say not sure. Some teachers say yes, some teachers say not sure. But I will say, guys, this series, high chance it will be provided in the exam. What series is it? This one. Do you see? I just cut it out just from my textbook. This thing here is first time in SPM. It was in uh in university. I you know the uh form six. It was in form six, but then I bring it down to form five. Don't ask me why. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what, what am I doing here? Hey, hey, hey. guys, uh, let me just briefly go through, guys. This page uh, is basically just a simple introduction on how this table is formed, just to suffer. Uh, I will say yes. <laughs> Should we memorize the half equation? You mean this? No need, no need. As I say, high chance, provided an exam. So let's, guys, let's pray hard. This thing provided an exam. I would say this thing uh, is as important as periodic table. Periodic table is always provided in SPM. I will hope that this is also provided in SPM too. Okay, because who gonna memorize all this electron potential? All these all these numbers. Uh, you ask me to memorize, I don't cannot do that. Okay, no. so I will say this thing here, this table here, high chance in exam. Uh, okay. Sometimes I question why I took chemistry. Hey, don't say that, okay? Have fun in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, for those who are actually interested in chemistry, when you go to uni, you will see all this chemistry are just like simple stuff. <laughs> because I took chemistry in, uh, in foundation science. When you go to university, chemistry is split into organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, and uh, physical chemistry. So basically from one subject, you split into three subjects. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you like chemistry, it's time to reconsider. <laughs> no, I'm not, not trying to stop you guys from learning chemistry. I'm trying to let you guys know if you really like chemistry, 
go along with it. Okay? Even though the pathway is hard. Okay. And okay, well, you see, I still survive, guys. Look at me. Ah, I survive. Okay. So uh kind of like to hear, guys. Okay, so what is basically this electron potential? Uh they are basically we know it as a chemical cell. I used to like chemistry. Wait. <laughs> Don't use too long. Eh? <laughs> hey, hey. So uh gg.com way so uh normally okay we actually set one guy as the standard because we call this standard electron potential series uh, is basically like you know period table when we actually talk about the relative atomic mass about all the elements right you know who is the standard that we use to compare all the mass okay all the ratio and stuff so actually it appears to, to be same in your period table we always have a standard which is your first element, H, okay? But because to be uh, easier to handle, we normally use 112, okay? 1 over 12 of your carbon. Ah, okay, so the one just leave it there. Uh. Same thing happens here is this table, uh, how do they form? Uh? How I know uh, putting lithium uh, will give you negative 3.04 volt. How I know putting Fe3 plus is going to give you positive 0.77 volt, which is if you look at the table, then the one guy at here is your standard he, he will be zero volt. If you look at the middle, do you see zero volt? So hydrogen at here, he will be again the, the guy who actually the standard of this table here. Ah, the H plus, correct. Okay. So the H plus is actually the standard, which is I will set this guy as zero. Ah, so why say so? It's like, guys, let's say I have uh, 300 students here. Okay. I don't want to expose my weight. Okay. Now I'm going to find the lightest. Okay, the lightweight, okay, the, the guy that is lightest weight on this class here, I'll set this seven as, as one. Then if I am two times heavier than him, I'm two. If this guy is two, three times heavier than him, he's three. So same thing happens here is all this voltage, uh, they need someone to have to be a standard. So the H is your standard. Okay, now so H is always zero. So what's the difference between the left part and the right part? Or uh, oh, you mean this? Okay. Can I? Okay, let me just go through it. Huh? Left is oxidizing agent, right is reducing agent. Very good. Yes, correct, correct. So this here, these two arrow given to you here. Okay, means everything on the right hand side here, okay, everything after arrow, they are your reducing agent. Everything on the left hand side table, they are your oxidizing agent. Ah, okay, now. So according to this table, we actually arrange them in this way. The higher in this table, the right hand side, means this guy here is the strongest reducing agent, okay? While at the left-hand side, the left-hand side chemical, because going down the strength increase, right? Means the bottom left, F, F2, this guy here, is your strongest oxidizing agent. You get the point? So every guy, everything here is your oxidizing agent, everything here is your reducing agent, but with different strength, okay? Uh, so sometimes we also call this the uh, reducing agent table, okay? But of course, at here, we call it the standard electro potential series, uh. So I'm not sure whether your teacher gonna ask you about the standard or not, but I still put it here because I never see any question about just a standard. Because you see, uh, why do we actually use H as standard? Because you see, by doing all this experiment, you can see that uh, we actually fix the standard condition at concentration one mole per dm cube, temperature 25 degrees Celsius, pressure 180m, electron as your platinum. And then we all set them as EO, okay, the EO value. Okay, which is zero volt. So whoever that pair with this guy, you should see a voltage. So for example, I took zinc and pair with H, right? And then you see that the value that you see from the voltmeter is 0 0.76 volt. Okay, now, means that between zinc and hydrogen, the standard, you have a potential difference of 0 0.76. Okay, but is it positive or is it negative? It depends on what? It depends on the electron itself. Okay. How do I know who's the electron again? Guys, I mentioned to you about the uh, who donate electron. Uh, just now you guys mentioned the who donate electron is uh, negative electron. Who receive electron is a uh, uh, positive electron, right? Same thing happens here. Okay. So the guy who donate electron is a negative electron. So because zinc is a negative electron, we will put a negative 0 0.76 volt. So this negative uh, is just to indicate the direction of your electron flow, of, or also to indicate your terminal uh, symbol for the metal, okay? Means that if I actually change this zinc into something else, 
If I change it, let's say into silver, AG, okay? Then you're gonna go to this table, okay? I see, ah, uh, AG is here, H is here. Do you see it's positive 0 0.8, something like that. So uh, the purpose of this table is they actually do all the possible pair of metals in real life already, means actually someone did this for you, like the scientists, uh, scientists who never, uh, who, who, who have nothing to do, okay? They do all this stuff. <laughs> Okay, to, to make a life suffer. So what they do is actually to, they actually carry out all the experiment to pair with the standard, and then they finalize and they compile it into this table. Ah, so I will say this table is a result from here. The table that you see right now is already a result that we actually done by scientists. Okay, according from zinc to H, AG to H, uh, different metal to, to H, different metal to H then you will see this table form. Okay, now, zinc is more reactive than H, so it, it, it is more electropositive than we know is anode. Uh, yes, can say so. Yes, yes. You can use the, uh, uh, the reactivity series, also possible. Yes, can, can, can. Ah, okay. So how do we normally read your series? Uh? You see from here. Okay, so do you, if you realize, uh, they actually fix them. You actually have to fix your, your direction. So means in the exam, uh, if you see uh, an equation that is mg become mg2 plus plus two electron, you try to bring this and compare to your table. Uh, do you see it's like the balik, vice versa? So before you read the value, make sure you the balik this thing first. Okay, you must always take your equation from your question or maybe from your exam, match it to the form on the table. Then only you can take the value. You get the one? Yeah, nah? So means in the exam sometimes they will give you a the balik equation then you must compare it. If you want to use this table, you must actually modify it into the, or the correct orientation. Only you can read the value. Okay. So from here, you see, let's say for here. Okay. I have Mg2 plus become uh, Mg, then Ag plus become Ag and stuff, all these things here. So what's the function of a salt bridge? Oh, a salt bridge uh, at here. Okay. Uh, I forgot to put in here. I'm so sorry. Okay. Salt bridge is basically, uh, you can put it here. Oh, sorry guys, you don't have the notes, right? But never mind. You guys should have the, the recorded video later on. So salt bridge is basically something to actually to complete. It's a chemical to complete the circuit. Ah, very good, very good. Some people giving me the hint by allowing ions to pass through. Allowing ions to pass through. Okay, okay. To allow the flow of electrons, uh, not electrons, ions, uh, because electron is here, is the actor, uh, is the wire, so it should be uh, ions. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, someone say to separate the two solution, right? Okay, this one uh, no need to write for salt bridge, but if they change it to a porous pot, I, I believe you guys said before this thing called porous pot, right? Then you have to include the answer. Uh, means if they ask you what is the function of a porous pot. You have to write this answer with the other one that your, that your friend say to separate the two solutions physically. Uh, but salt bridge no need because salt bridge you may be using two beaker. So you no need to separate them. They are already separated in the beginning of the experiment. So porous pot is the other one that you need to actually separate two chemicals physically. The one you have to add into a uh, porous pot. But salt bridge no need. Salt bridge is just one answer like this. Okay, nah? Okay, so going down from here, porous, porous, porous. Okay, there's another one called, a, okay, let me put it here. Porous. Okay, to separate two chemical physically. Okay, in Daniel cell, yes, very good. Oh my God, I heard porous. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, definitely, I will say this table, guys. I'll, I'll say this standard, uh, like the way to find the standard or this table, the way to build this table, uh, I will say not very possible coming in exam. Uh, but you need to know how to use this table. Okay, so the most important thing in this table is basically the agent. Why? Because in most of the exam, they will actually ask you like whether uh, is there any uh, reaction between this chemical A and chemical B? Then you have to check if it's a strong reducing agent and a strong oxidizing agent reacting, then you have reaction. 
But if you have weak reducing agent and weak oxidizing agent trying to react, you are not going to get any reaction. Ah, so in this table, you can imagine this whole table as a big picture. You see an empty box here? Okay, yeah. So left hand side, everything is my oxidizing agent. Okay. And then right hand side, everything is my reducing agent. Okay. Strong, strong, weak, weak. So you go in this way. Okay. Everything on the top right is your strong reducing agent. Okay. Top left, uh, bottom left is your strong oxidizing agent. Top left, bottom right is your weak oxidizing agent and your weak reducing agent. So let me give you some example from textbook, guys. This is literally from textbook. Huh? Yeah. So of course, I have some question from exercise book. It's on at the at the exercise at the back. So you guys can try it when you are free. So let's say for here, they ask you, does the reaction occur between copper and silver nitrate uh, solution? So first thing, always determine who is reacting. So if you compare this, this is actually a metal displacement process, right? CU try to go in and actually displace out silver, kind of. Guys, last time, uh, used to be a very simple one. You just have to check your reactivity series. Then you see who is reactive, who is more reactive, who is less reactive. Then the more reactive one can actually displace the less reactive one, right? But because this thing come out to form five, this SPES, this standard electro potential series, they are slowly replacing off the reactivity series. <laughs> you, you, you try, you, you see what they're trying to do. They're actually trying to turn this, uh, try to make this uh, SPES, okay, this electropotential series to be more common in future and slowly replaces, replace out the reactivity series. Because reactivity series are, to be exact, when you go to uni, reactivity series is not as accurate as you think. Ah, so to actually use the correct syllabus, so guys, not to say the old syllabus is wrong, but I will say this table here is definitely something correct, okay? Which is, is more accurate than the reactivity series. Because if you try to Google reactivity series, uh, there's a lot of versions. Some different version also possible one. Some higher, some lower. Uh. Then who is the correct one, right? So actually reactivity series is just a short form, a simplified version of this. But now they are trying to bring this full version Last time it's like free trial. Now it's like premium version of the reactivity, re reactivity series. So to be exact, to check whether is there any reaction or not, last time you just check reactivity series, right? Very simple, right? But here, you have to check the two metals here, copper and silver nitrate. This is silver ions. So what you're going to do, you go to your table, take out, extract the two equations that is related to copper and silver which is I get it out from you at here. And don't forget to make sure that you arrange them accordingly. Uh, who is higher, who is lower, make sure you arrange them. Once you get this out from a table, you circle up the thing that you see. You see at this equation, you contain Cu2 plus and Cu. At this equation is Ag plus and Ag, right? You circle up what you see in the, uh, in the question. Do you see copper? At here, the copper is atom or ion. Ah, so you see at here is copper, add into silver nitrate, at here your copper is actually atom, right? So you circle the copper atom. Let's say I put a, a dotted red circle here. Then do you see silver nitrate is silver ions? So among the equation, who's the silver ions? Ag plus, right? So when you circle this out, you check, are they strong and strong? So according to my table, my six pack table, do you see top right is strong agent? strong reducing agent. Bottom left is a strong uh, oxidizing agent. So because this is a strong reducing agent, this is a strong oxidizing agent, you will have a reaction occur. So you see, strong reducing agent, strong, uh, strong oxidizing agent, then uh, one will donate electron, one will receive electron, and therefore conclusion, displacement reaction occur between a strong reducing agent and a strong oxidizing agent. You see how it goes. Huh? Last time, huh, we just have to check. Oh, copper more reactive than silver. Yes, yes, can, can, can happen. But now, huh, you have to check the equation, check the element, check the chemical, circle up what you are seeing in the question. Then you check, is it strong and strong? Then only you can double confirm you have a reaction occur. Ah, it's much more steps to do, right? That's why I say, I say guys, this is where you all die in this chapter. Lah. Okay, especially those from K, uh, from KBSM to KSSM, uh, GG man. Okay, this one, 
a lot of people from the retaking SPM very hard. Okay, so uh, in this case, is there any possible question that uh, no reaction occur? You see, uh, does a reaction between copper and magnesium nitrate occur? Normally, if you check the series, you know copper lower than magnesium. Copper cannot displace magnesium. Uh. But no, now you see, uh, find the copper equation, find the magnesium equation. So according to the table, copper equation, uh, copper equation, magnesium equation, then you circle up what you see. I'm seeing copper atom, you circle copper atom. I'm seeing magnesium ion, circle the magnesium ion. And therefore, according to my six pack table, top left is weak oxidizing agent, bottom right is weak reducing agent. So which is within weak oxidizing agent and weak reducing agent, you are not gonna have any reaction. Ah, okay now, so you see, reaction does not occur between a weak reducing agent and a weak oxidizing agent. Guys, are you still alive? <laughs> okay, guys, are you all still alive behind the screen? Don't die first. Belly. <laughs> Belly. Uh... Okay, so drowning. <laughs> okay, welcome to hell. Hey, okay, blur. Uh. Come, guys. Okay, so basically, your problem is, guys, let me just go step by step. Let me just break down. Are you okay on extracting equation from table? Uh, you know which table, uh, which table to refer to. You know which chemical to refer to, right? Uh, so I have copper and magnesium nitrate. Lah. So find the copper equation, find the magnesium equation. I will say this is a very simple kickstart. Okay? So the table is based on where the ions and uh, elements in the half equation. So basically, because if the table is a fixed table, lah, you cannot modify a table. So what you're going to do is you bring the information down from the table. Then you actually uh, choose the element or the ion that you actually see. So from here, you see it's copper and magnesium nitrate. So copper is this one, magnesium nitrate, the magnesium ion is Mg2+. This one. So guys, if I to ballet, if I to ballet, magnesium now try to react with copper nitrate. Now what do you choose? So do you see magnesium is alone? Magnesium atom. So you're going to choose this. Do you see now copper got ion? Now it's copper ion, right? Ah, then copper ion, you choose copper ion. So do you see it's top right, bottom left, strong and strong? Ah, okay. So right out the equation is the first best way to do this. Yes. Ah, so not the EO value of Mg is more negative than copper. Uh, of course, uh, that my, my shortcut is yes, what, uh, top right, bottom right, uh, bottom left is strong and strong. But if you try to explain, uh, of course, you have to say uh, the EO value. Well, they inverted the equation and then the EO value changed the positive sign and negative sign or vice versa. That's why I say, guys, if exam gives you equation, uh, don't straight away use. You have to check with the table first. Is, are they in the correct orientation? Because if they are in the opposite orientation, you have to opposite the equation, the equation and then your sign also must the balik. Ah, okay now. So uh, in this case, guys, of course, you have to write all this information I see, like, uh, EO value of AG is more positive, okay? Uh, EO value of CU is less positive than, than this and this. So they surely gonna ask for explanation. Um, as I say, guys, this is something brand new uh, in SPM. So I'm not sure whether they're gonna ask an exam or not, but to be safe, we brought this, um, this explanation out from Form 6. We actually got this answer from Form 6. So we, we brought it down and put it here, just in case. Lah. Okay. So there's a mistake in the explanation for magnesium, is it? Yeah. See, the EO value for Cu is more positive than Mg. The okay, EO value of more, oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Thanks for the typo. Uh, more negative. Okay, guys. Is this true? What if I say more negative? Uh, I, the body, I say less positive. Can, can, can. Basically, less positive and more negative, that they mean the same. <laughs> you get the point. This is why I don't like this topic. Even in Form 6, uh, I learned this in my foundation. I don't like this topic a lot because they always confuse me with all this more negative, less positive. Basically, they mean the same, right? So, in my way of understanding, you just go my way first. You just go my way. You circle up whatever you see on the equation. I, I see Mg, I circle Mg. I see Cu2+, I circle Cu2+. Then after you know, 
is strong and strong, got, got, got reaction, right? Then you just go along with the go along with the numbers. Ah, you literally don't have to understand is it more negative, less negative, how it goes. Ah. You just have to remember uh, who is a strong reducing agent, who is a strong oxidizing agent. And there you go. You can actually know where, whether there's a reaction occur or not. Ah, more negative equals to more electron positive. Mm. More negative equals to more electron positive. Can say so, can say so. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, in this case, guys, I believe uh, those who actually interact with me, some of, almost of you guys can understand, but those who are actually behind the screen, almost dead. Okay. So if you have any questions, even after the class, feel free to ask in the Telegram group. I'm inside it. Okay. So I will try to answer you guys your, to clear confusion in the group if you are shy to ask here. Or you can PM me in Telegram group also. Sure. Okay. So, so guys, if you're okay with this, you see, uh, guys, until here, uh, we are just at 1.2. We have 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, and 1.6. <laughs> so guys, definitely, if you consider the, the, the length of this chapter, uh, it's definitely longer than chapter your, your, your short chapter. Uh, this topic is where all students die. That's why I purposely put this topic here so that you guys can go along with it. Okay, This is all brand new syllabus. Never come out in KBSN before. First time in PSSM. The moment... The, when this textbook comes out in, in the beginning of the year, I also cannot accept. I literally, I, I hated this, this topic the most when I was in, in, in uni, and then they come out, they put in Form 5. <laughs> okay, so, so guys, I understand your, your confusion and stuff, but guys, let's don't give up, okay? We can do it. Okay, so guys, if you're okay, uh, I thought I forgot everything in KB, KBSM. Oh, uh, no, no, no. You never learned this in KBSM. <laughs> Why see you more positive but still lower tendency? Uh, more positive, lower tendency. Okay, it is more positive than the MG, but then we are trying to say the copper is, is weak. You see here, weak. It is a weak, weak reducing agent. Uh, actually, you are comparing this and this. So this, if you compare MG and CU, this is a weak reducing agent. Something like that. Okay, so uh, that's why for here, eh? wait, wait, wait. Copper has, huh? You know, is it, is it a mistake? Has lower tendency, guys. Wow. I see this also, my, my eye blur. Really. Copper has lower tendency to release. I, sorry, sorry, guys. Higher, higher. Okay, loss. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I literally, I say, I say, oh, feels weird. Copper is more electron negative tendency to accept electrons. So at here, it's a higher tendency to receive electron to become copper 2 plus. A. Eh? Eh, no. Eh, sorry, sorry, guys. I just confused my own self. This is correct. I see copper lower tendency. This is correct. But I go and write this thing here. Hi. So guys, should be a weaker reducing agent. I was like, huh? Going in and out, going in and out. <laughs> sorry guys, all the typo. I'm so sorry. I just confused myself here. So go along with it. Just go like, who is stronger, who is weaker, then just write out the answer. Probably when I, I was typing out these notes, uh, I was like midnight through the 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> okay, so sorry guys. Uh, if you see typo at here, I will try to change it after the class. So when I send you the, the notes, right, it will be the correct version. Okay, so when I type it out, I will say that it's like midnight. Yeah, because I like to do stuff at midnight. Okay, I'm, a, I'm an owl. Okay, I do all the midnight stuff. You ask me to to do stuff in the morning, uh, I cannot. <laughs> you ask me to do stuff at 3 a.m., full power. <laughs> but you see, like, st I still blur. Cannot, cannot. Okay. So, okay, so for here, guys, I'm not actually going to go in, I'm not going to really go through details on the voltaic cell, electrolytic cell. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, when you go for voltaic cell, which is known as the Daniel cell or the chemical cell, uh, do you see this HNLP? 
So this one here, uh, some students will actually need this. Higher in the uh, series, okay, higher in the table is your negative terminal, lower in the table is your positive terminal. So let's say for here, Mg and copper, if you go, at, go up to the table, Mg and copper. So Mg and copper. So higher in the table is actually your negative terminal. Okay, then your low copper is lower in the table, right? So it's a positive terminal. So all these positive terminal, they are a lot of way to memorize. Okay, just, just find the one that you normally use to it. So for those who say, teacher, donate electron is a uh, negative terminal. Can, can, if you want to go for that, sure. It works for all the voltaic cell and the chemical cell. And flow of electrons are, guys, uh, when you all memorize flows of electron, flow of electrons, do you all memorize positive to negative or negative to positive? I want to see like who's the positive to negative gang or the, the negative to positive gang. No, you all don't do that. Ah, so guys, if you don't do positive to negative or negative to positive, uh, uh, that's a very good understanding because positive to negative is correct for electrolytic cell, but negative for, for voltaic cell, it'd be wrong because different cells, uh, they have different understanding, different theory. So the best way to understand the electron flow is to always look at your anode and kappa. But if you know, in electrolytic cell, let me just go through a, a very simple uh, things here. Let me see from here. Huh? Hey, from here. Okay. Voltaic cell is A minus. Okay. And then electrolytic cell is A plus. Internal bleeding on process. <laughs> okay. As I say, guys, I don't expect you guys survive after this class. Okay. Because this is a very tedious chapter. Okay. So once you guys have the notes, so hopefully you guys spend some time on reading the short notes and do the exercise. Okay. So I guess hopefully. Now all the damage you are getting, it will be worth it in SPM. Okay, let's go through it. So for the anode and cathode terminal, okay, it will be it will be different for different cell. You see, voltaic cell anode is negative terminal. Uh, electrolytic cell is your positive anode is positive terminal. Anode is always on the left right. What do you mean left right? No 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 no. Can change can change one. Ah, I see. Correct correct. Okay. If the question turbale and not on the right side, then you, everything you learn turbale. Ah, so don't memorize in the way. That's why I put it here. A minus and A plus ah, means that to identify positive terminal and negative terminal, first thing for electrolytic cell, you see battery, right? Whenever you see battery, it's very simple because you have a battery terminal. If you know that the battery long one is positive terminal, short one is negative terminal, then for this case here, and not is positive terminal, cathode is negative terminal. Ah, okay, then for the other side, voltaic cell, okay, it's always the balik. Okay, see, once I know that oh, zinc is negative terminal, copper is positive terminal, but anode at here is negative, cathode at here is positive. Do you see I put here for, for a reason? Electrolytic cell is A plus, anode positive terminal. Voltaic cell is anode negative terminal. Ah, this is the reason why I ask you don't. Don't memorize negative to positive, positive to negative, and don't memorize and not at left side and not at right side. Ah, okay, so just go along with it. <laughs> ah, okay, guys, guys, chill, chill, chill. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. We are all here to learn, ma. Ah. <laughs> okay, so in this case here, okay, similarities, redox reaction occur. Okay, electron flow from anode to cathode, but there are some differences here. Uh, different terminals, okay, anode cathode. Okay, but definitely, guys, when you go along with the electrolytic cell, there's a lot of things to do to go through. We have factor number one, factor number two, and factor number three to actually decide uh, what ions to choose to selectively discharge and stuff. Okay, and then along with it, we have the extraction of metal. So this one, uh, do you all remember you learned this in form five? Uh, sorry, in form three. Basically, this is the reactivity series of metal. Ah, this one, oh. Uh, is the one that is the simplified version of the standard electropotential table. So uh, in this case here, yeah, yeah, the metal that is above carbon, because they are very reactive, means they are very hard to break down. Why do I say uh, extraction of metal from ore? Means that metal are normally rusted. They are actually in ore condition when they are in underground, when they actually get it out from underground, they are normally rusted. Okay, so, uh, we always have to actually look at who can be done by, how do I remove oxygen? How do I remove the rusted part from the 
rusted aluminium, rusted magnesium and stuff. So we're going to actually go along with this way. So different uh, category, this different way. For electrolysis, dilute solution is 0 0.1 or 0 0.00001. Oh, okay, uh, let me just put it on here. For electrolysis, okay, I actually label down here. Dilute means that the concentration is less than equal to one. Okay, so one is actually still consider uh, dilute. Okay, one still consider dilute less than one, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.001 is still consider uh, dilute. But if it's something more than one, that is considered concentrated. So like two more per dm cube, three more per dm cube, uh, you go along with that. Okay, so that's how you decide who is dilute, who is concentrated. Okay, then uh, going down, we actually have your ways to uh, extract your metal. So I'm not going to go through this because these this are just simple understanding. Okay, so some blast remains and then rusting. As a redox reaction. So, guys, this one, uh, this rusting, uh, uh, for, for KBSM, last time also got, uh, rusting is one of a very common exam, in a uh, common exam question in SPM. Okay, especially drawing. Uh, have you guys all learned this in school, right? Okay, so the teacher asked you to draw this stuff because I see some school teacher, uh, they actually ask students to do presentation on this part. Then they consider thought already. Okay, so, but this case here, you have to understand that. A rusting of metal is basically a voltaic cell, a, a, a chemical cell. Why say so? Because you can see that you are having anode in the middle, you are having cathode at the side. You see that? This metal actually dissolve, and then you're going to actually form metal ions. You're going to accumulate at the side. But at the side, as here, you see cathode as here, O2 water with electrons, they are going to form into OH minus. They're going to combine to form the first layer of rusting. Uh, you can see the FeOH2. Okay. And guys, because some, some, I actually read some SPM question before. Uh, they asked you that why rusting, you will see a little bit of green color. Because you all know iron rusting is always brown color, right? Do you know that some of the iron, not some, uh, most of the iron rust, uh, before they become brown color, they are actually green color. Ah, uh, why? Because the first First thing that you form in rusting is Fe2 plus with the OH minus, you form FeOH2, right? Which is Fe2 plus is green. Then only further on the oxidize, it turns into Fe uh, OH3, which is brown. So that's why when you see a rusted metal, sometimes you see like green color, green color stuff inside the rusted part. That is basically the Fe2 plus. But it doesn't gonna, it's not, not gonna last long because maybe in a few minutes, in a few hours, it's just gonna turn into brown color. Okay, you will continue oxidize from Fe2 plus become Fe3 plus. Okay, and this is not the very common one. The very common one is this test. Is on here. Ah, guys, do you all learn this in school? The test for the presence of the rusting of an Fe2 plus, your metal and stuff and stuff, okay? So when you try to test whether the metal rusts or not, we actually have a standard, again, guys, a standard, which is just iron meal, just iron meal without any metal. Ah, correct, correct, the very long game. <laughs> So to, to detect Fe2+, plus, which is to detect the presence of rusting of Fe, we have this thing called the potassium hexacyanophorate tree. And guys, do you all remember this in Form 4? You all learned SORT, uh, the special conformation test to test Fe2+, plus also use the same thing. Ah, the potassium hexacyanophorate tree. Yes, this is the same thing from there. Okay, so which is basically when I actually add this indicator, you see dark blue, uh, it proved that you have Fe2+. Plus. Wow, someone know the formulas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the formula not necessary. Lah. Okay, but do you see there's another thing called phenolphthalein here? Why do we have phenolphthalein? To test your OH minus. Okay, wow, we pink color, very good. The pink color comes from the phenolphthalein. Because when you guys learn acid and base, do you remember phenolphthalein in alkaline is what color? Ah, so test your orbit. Phenolphthalein, ah, what is the color when you have in acid? Uh, neutral and alkaline. What's the color changes? What's the color difference there? Uh, colorless, colorless pink, correct. Basically, the only color you see uh, is in alkaline pink color. Acid, colorless. Neutral, also colorless. That's why when you remember it, when you do neutralization, uh, can you, when you add acid into your alkaline in the conical class, can you just pour every acid into the alkaline? Cannot, because you might overshoot and it turns into acid, where acid is also colorless. You cannot differentiate neutral and colorless. 
So you must do titration in a very slow way. You must drip, 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 drip until you fall asleep. And then you wake up, you feel experiment again. <laughs> Have you guys done it in, in Form 3? Because you all learned this in Form 2. Titration, you all, you all learned in Form 2, right? Ah, if you can actually get the chance to do it, congratulations. <laughs> because you haven't been doing any experiment for the two, past two years, right? If you actually go, if you don't have MCO, normally we will do that. Okay. My chemistry teacher favorite experiment. Why? Why is it, why is it her favorite experiment? Very easy to do. <laughs> Just open a little bit. Drop, 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 drop. <laughs> teacher, if the Fe2 plus turn into Fe3 plus, will it turn into original color? Oh, it will, of course, at here, definitely, if you leave it there for long enough, it will turn into Fe3 plus. Yes, but for potassium hexa cyanophe 3 for, for Fe3 plus, uh, it's not original color. It, it's going to turn into something else. Okay, it's actually red color, red coloration. But don't worry about it because uh, this experiment is not going to last that long. Okay, this experiment is not going to last that long. Uh, whenever you see blue color, then you stop again. Okay, you're not going to wait until you see some other color. Okay, leave it in the corner for a few days. Yeah. And because at here, do you see it's gelatin, the jelly? Okay, jelly slows down the diffusion. Then you see the color, blue color very clearly. And then because the oxygen outside also have to go in. There is not enough oxygen in the jelly to further oxidize the Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Ah, so you wouldn't get a different color besides than dark blue. Okay. So of course, at here, uh, back to here, the pink color is because to test OH minus. Why must test OH minus? Uh? Because if you actually look through it, where do you get OH minus? The reason you get OH minus is actually when your oxygen reacts with water and combines with the electrons that donate from the middle of the metal, right? And there you go, you form your OH minus. So, which is, do you really care what metal rusts here? You don't really care. Whatever metal rusts here, you always have electrons donated, right? Means that the electron will combine with water, oxygen, and form your OH minus. Okay? Can I? That's why you see from here, the pink color, most of the time you see it. You, most of the time you see pink color, very high, high, low, low. No matter what, you always see pink color, except, uh, 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 except for the first one, because the first one is just Fe. Uh. The rusting of Fe is so slow that you don't really see the pink color. You see very low blue color. It's the, it's the proof that you are having Fe2+. Plus. But you see non-pink color. It's not to say no pink color, but the pink color coming out very slowly. You, the OH, come, come, OH minus coming out very slowly. So you, you barely see the pink color. But other reaction, because you are having metal pairing, right? Metal pairing, if you put a metal above, the, or if it's more reactive than iron, you will prevent the metal, iron metal from rusting. So this is why MG pair with Fe, zinc pair with Fe, you have non-blue color. Because magnesium and zinc protected Fe from rusting. So no Fe rusting, no Fe2+, plus, no blue color. But you still see pink color. Why? Because magnesium rusting and zinc rusting, it still gives you OH minus, right? So you still see, you still see pink color. Ah, one well for the other two is you are trying to pair with metal that are less reactive than Fe. That will speed up the reaction, the, the bursting process of iron. So, so you see high, high, high. Ah, you see high blue intensity, high blue intensity. Then you see blue, uh, low pink intensity. But why lower? Because the, color, the blue color somehow cover up the pink color a bit. Okay, so that's how you see it, the, the pink color is low. You get very high concentration of blue color. Okay, uh, but my reference book state that the intensity of pink color in A should be high. You mean this one, A is high? High pink intensity means just the iron a little bit. Oh, okay, this one, uh, uh, I actually found this, not to say mistake, uh, I will say different condition in different reference book. Okay, some of the reference book, they actually put high because they say, uh, Iron rust. Lah. But some of the book they say uh, because rusting very slowly, it rusts very slowly. Uh, that you see non-blue uh, non-pink color because uh, you don't really see it. And most of the time you see the OH minus will actually react with the Fe2 plus uh, to form FeOH2. Okay, this is the reason why. So definitely, if you say here is high, I will say it's not wrong. Okay, just for different explanation. You get the point? So for this case, you can say it's none because the OH minus reacted with the Fe2 plus, you form something else. But if you say, teacher, I say I saw this pink color, cannot, can. 
Okay, just that you have to explain it in the correct way. Oh, yeah, in different conditions. One, I will say this one, you see pink color definitely, yes. But after a few, a few minutes later, you see it disappears because it turns into something else. Okay, oh, yeah. so I will say here is high or none also possible. It's not wrong, both also correct. Oh, yeah. so, so guys, I know all these things are, you guys very confused on this, which one should, should I write? Guys, as long as your explanation is correct, I will say your teacher, We'll, we'll accept your answer. Okay. Okay. So of course, after rusting, so to prevent rusting, we have protective coating, sacrificial protection, and also your alloying and stuff. Okay, guys, my screen lagging. Wait, uh. Is my screen lagging? Testing. My screen here lagging. Oh no, it's not moving. Is it moving? Is it moving? Uh? But my side, I cannot see it. Eh. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh, it's back, it's back, it's back. Okay, 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 okay. I think something wrong with my internet for that few seconds. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so guys, as I said, uh, at the end of the few pages, I actually mentioned that I included some uh, exercises. Okay, so uh, if not mistaken, I put like a lot of questions here. Uh, in total, there is actually 23 questions. Each topic, I put around two to three questions. Okay, so I would think it's good enough for your last minute uh, practice. So guys, don't, don't say that you, you actually read this note, then you say that I can go for SPM. No, this is just a, a brief study. Okay, a last minute study just in case uh, exam is coming. Okay, so when will we get these notes? Uh, this one, I think uh, maybe you have to ask the, Mas Yonglun, I think you'll be the one who actually send email. Yolun, when will we yep. be getting it? Sorry, for the material, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after today, uh, probably next week or over the weekend. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes, guys, will this question be set, sent in the group? Uh, if you want to, sure. I can send it to the, to the Telegram group also. Then you guys can download it and print it out, do it yourself, or do it in, in an iPad and stuff. Okay, so this is a bonus, basically, guys. Okay. So just for you guys to actually carry out some practice, okay, if you say, teacher, I can't find any exercise book, okay, just do this. Can we find exercise online? I didn't buy a reference book. Hey. If you want to find reference online, uh, can. There's actually a lot of reference online, but beware on the labeling KSSM, okay, because some people, they never update, they are still KBSM. Make sure you find KSSM. KSSM is a keyword, okay? Please send the note to the Telegram group. Can, can, can. After I update all the mistakes, guys. <laughs> okay, after I update all the mistakes, you see all this Adu high. <laughs> yup, all KBSM, yes, yes, yes. So make sure you be careful on the online reference, okay? What we all do at here is we normally buy all the KSSM book on the market, then we actually compile it into our, our notes. So guys, if you are interested in joining my intuition classes, if you want to, okay, this is the, some link you can click through along with the PDF, if you want to. Can do past year paper, okay. This is every question student asking. Can we do actually past year paper, guys? Past year paper can is can, but you need to avoid uh, questions that are not coming out in KSSM, which is most of the students not sure which part is not in KSSM. So uh, if you really want to do uh, KBSM past year, sure, sure, but it's not enough for SPM. For this year SPM, definitely not enough for this year SPM. You can do it, but it's definitely not going to be enough. Uh, and then you're going to actually have some new format, yes. Okay, new format changes, okay, some essay format changes and stuff. So there will be a lot of changes. So by doing past year, if you say teacher, I want to practice on the question, can. Okay, the question asking, the way of asking is almost the same. But format will be different. And then the the syllabus co covering will be different as well. Okay, so this question all this year are specifically on KSSM. Okay, so you can you can try to pump all this question here. You can finish all the question here. It's all for KSSM. Okay, no, no, don't have to worry about is it for KBSM only or not in KSSM? No, everything here is all on KSSM. Okay, ah, so uh, I will say my time is almost up, guys. So uh, good luck in doing all this. Practices. Okay, I'll provide the answer at the, 
at the same time. Okay, so uh, by learning in your own study at home, guys, okay, having answers is very critical, very, very important. Uh. You do first, then only check answer. Uh. Don't copy answer. Okay, so let me just correct all these minor mistakes first. Then I, I send it to Yong Lun, then you all get it in the Telegram group. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here for all the stuff, all my teaching here. So back to Yong Lun. All right. Okay. Actually, students who are still here, uh, we do have around 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I would say. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can ask now. Yeah. So we got yeah. some time for Q&A. Those of you saying thank you, like you're going to bed already. <laughs> going to bed, uh, I will share the files, whatever. Um, Teacher Jahan share, share to me, I'll share to the Telegram group. Don't worry. For those of you who've been asking, okay, don't worry. Oh, I see Quan Ching student. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> students from every, everywhere, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay so guys, hmm. uh, let me just okay. Sorry, uh, let me just. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so guys, uh, sorry for the mistakes around the notes uh, because I really do it in during midnight. So, uh. I hope this seminar can help you guys in, in your coming exam because you guys have an exam, right? So I hope uh, don't you all don't just remember the, the four alphabets, okay? <laughs> so uh, just go along with the notes and go along with the exercise. I hope it helps you in your coming exam. Even though we don't see the future, when are we going back to school? We don't see it. So uh, I hope, okay, your SPM do not delay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Thanks, guys. I uh, thanks for all the. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can I? Where can I see the recorded video? Uh, I think that will be, uh, Yong Lun decision. Okay. Passing back to you. Okay, like I said, the recorded will be all posted in the group. Don't worry. Okay. I re update you. Will get is in the Telegram group. That's why it's important to stay in the group. Um, if there are any further questions, we can ask later as well. But um, if you haven't joined. Uh, please let us know, okay, so that we will give you the link to join in the Telegram group, okay? No problem, no problem. Okay, it seems like no, no questions. If no questions, then we will end soon. Right here, we will end early tonight. <laughs> uh, just now, just now yeah. all, the, all, the, all along the way got Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all already answer the questions just now. That's good, that's good. Yep, uh, my team has already put up the... Uh, Telegram link for you to join. If you haven't joined, please do. And uh, yeah, I see people leaving here. Okay, I guess not. So those of you who are joining in tomorrow for the science um science class tomorrow, please same time, same place where you where you are seated right now. Tune in back okay, again I'm, tomorrow. We have this love to have you. Yep. I'm yep. a question. Sorry. Yes, there's uh, a question here. Can you explain a little bit on paper tree? Okay, guys. Uh, because in paper tree is actually my first time, but it, it wasn't the first time in our history. It was last time, very long time ago, uh, my father era. Uh, they actually do practical tests. Uh. So, uh, but now they, they are eventually they change it to written tests. Then now uh, they're actually turning it back to practical tests. So, yeah, my father's time, yeah. Even my father's time too, yes. So, uh, uh, what happened in practical test is actually the most important thing uh, is just doing the test is not hard. Guys, by doing, doing the practical test, I would say carrying out the experiment is not really hard. You just have to go along with the procedure, right? It's a guided experiment. Just, just go along with it. What I'm worried about, even in KBSM, for those who actually, actually do in KBSM, right? Paper tree used to be a very long written test. You have to write planning experiment and stuff and this and that kind of. So, you know my girlfriend, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that was that was that was sudden. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I'm not worried about the, the carry out experiment. I'm still worried about the observation, variables, inference, and hypothesis. This is where uh, 15 marks, right, guys? I would say around like if not mistaken, uh, it's five marks for hands-on, 10 marks for answering question. So do you see like hands-on, it doesn't take a lot of marks inside there. It's the most of the marks is still inside your, your answering question. So you don't say, teacher, a practical test, can we just not study anything? Let it just go in, hey, 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 
then do your experiment, no. Okay, you can't do that. You still have to understand the, uh, the experiment. What do you see? Why do you see this? Why you see blue color? Why you see pink color? Like just how we say that. Is that how in the experiment? Why you see pink? Why you see blue? Okay, why the blue color? Okay, eventually changes color and stuff. And the inference and stuff. And hypothesis, like the explanation, what do you understand and stuff. So I would say, right, the written test uh, is still very important. Don't say, teacher, practical test, very fun. Okay, so I wish they had tuition for experiments. This is what I always wanted to do, but oh, very hard. <laughs> you want me to go and buy chemical? Uh? I, I don't know where to buy as well. And it's, I think you need, you need approval for chemical buying. <laughs> Technically, we can blow up the lab, just score well on the written test. If you blow up the lab, then I think <laughs> you're going to get zero marks straight away. Like. <laughs> okay, teacher, for the 111 trichloroethane, if you put excess BR2 by accident on purpose, with the CLCAI2, the 111 trichloroethane will react with the excess BR2 and the I2. Access, if you put excess BR2 accident or on purpose with the will react with the excess BR2 or the I2. Uh, oh, correct. Good question. Okay, the reason why if you add this 111 trichloroethane uh, is always few drops. Okay, even just some, uh, just a very thin layer. Don't, don't put too much. Okay, but normally they will react with the one that is more reactive. Okay, they will try to react with the one that is more reactive, which is the one that higher in, in group seven, group 17. Okay, uh, teacher, can you list out some practical exam? Oh, nice. Uh, because practical exam, there's no popular experiments. There's no, there's no pass here for that. So, uh, if you ask me, uh, the practical test is just 45 minutes, including answering questions. You can try to analyze experiments that can be done within less than 15 minutes. Okay, any experiment that can be done within 15 minutes, uh, they are your possible experiments. Okay, imagine you try to do like uh, uh, neutralization, possible, it can be done in 15 minutes, yes. Okay, and then uh, will the paper tree be unguided? I uh, know, for right now, I see the, the, the online, uh, the SPM format, it, it, is, it stated that it's a guided experiment. Okay, so, uh, Yes, 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 yes. So for experiments, I cannot tell you which experiment, but I can tell you that time limit is a very good factor to determine which experiment can be done within 15 minutes, then there will be your choice of answers, uh, choice of experiments. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, all good. Okay, yes. Appreciate. Thanks, guys, for coming. Thanks for coming for this two hours. Uh, paper tree will be unguided. No, no, no. Definitely will be guided. For now, la, until now. La. Maybe they change it to paper tree, become written test. No one knows. And yes, apparatus is something very important in your paper tree also. Your school have to buy chemical and apparatus that's enough for everyone just to do the paper tree. So it's very hard to actually carry out paper tree, actually. So how to score in chemistry? Hey, guys, to be honest, uh, if you ask me how did I study during my time, uh, I spend questions. Instead of memorizing and uh, eating up the book, I prefer on doing exercise. Okay, I do a lot of exercise, I do a lot of past years. So I will definitely say practice makes perfect. Okay, like maths, yes, like maths. Okay. So I would say practice is the best way to study for chemistry. Lah. Okay, so to trust me or not, it's up to you. Okay, uh, I got an A for chemistry. <laughs> okay, so it's all your effort, guys. Okay, where can I get these notes? Uh, Telegram group or email? Okay, I will post it into the Telegram group. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I think passing back to Yolu. Okay. All right. Okay, once again, for those of you who may miss it earlier, so I was just saying that if you haven't joined the Telegram group, the link was posted in the chat. But we can post it one more time. You can join all the things um, that's been discussed today and even the recording will be shared um, through the Telegram group later on, okay? So don't worry about that um, if you've missed out. 
Yep, that's a link right there. Okay. If there are no more questions, I guess it's a good night. <laughs> okay. For all of you. Nice. Thank night. you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Jahan, for all the time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Yeah. See you all back um, tomorrow night. Okay. Have a good rest, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.